the last few weeks, we went across the length and breadth of India, tracing the history and the stories behind some of the most spectacular weaves of India. These textiles, from the vibrant patani to the resplendent Banarasi silks, made India famous across the world. As we unraveled the stories, what stood out in most cases was the special relationship between the weave and the place it comes from. Most of these textiles have a deep connect with the architecture of the place of their origin. Take for instance the Banarasi, where one can see the influence of different phases of Banaras from antiquity to the 12th century CE, the Mughal period and finally the 18th century CE, when it saw a great revival. Most of what we see today comes from that period. But one of the earliest references to the textiles of Banaras came from the Buddha himself. He said to have given instructions that when he died, his body should be wrapped in the fine cloth of Banaras. In Sarnath, where the Buddha gave his first sermon and the Buddhist Sangha or Brotherhood took shape, one can see sculptural references to the many patterns we find so frequently in the weaves of Banaras. Historian Binda Paranjpe explains how the early weavers used the same design palette as the architects who built monasteries like this. The weavers here they were certainly in dialogue with the people who are working in stone carving, wood carving, maybe some kind of ivory, terracotta. We have seen the terracotta plaques here and things like that. Lot of terracotta work was here. So I think that the weavers must have got those motives and shared it or the sculptors had the motives which the weavers shared and this give and take must have happened always uh, because it cannot be uh, isolated to one type of craft. The elegant Kanjivaram still has a deep connect to this, the Kailashanatha temple in Kanjipuram. This temple saw many dynasties add their own layers to it, from the 7th century CE onwards when it was built. Today, this legacy is reflected in the Kanjivaram. What is unique is the fact that the body and the border are woven separately and joined together in what is called korve. You will see it uh, when you go and see the weaving. And these designs, whether it's the korve or the border design, are all taken from temples. You know, the designs, are, you have Rudraksha, then you have Hamsam. You know, you have different uh, designs which you see on the temple pillars and so on. You'll find it in these Kanchipuram sari. Another such weave is the Baluchari, which draws inspiration from the unique and spectacular terracotta temples of Bishnupur. In the 17th and 18th centuries, these temples followed a tradition of chronicling their times through sculptures on the temples, and this tradition was carried forward by the Baluchari. You know, it, it is a, the pallas, as you can see, are very architectural. There were many questions that were asked that why is the Baluchari palla so long? Why is it one and a half meters? Who would wear it? So if you wore it in Bengali style and you pleated it, you couldn't see the grand palla. And you, there was no nothing like a Bengali style. So if you did wear it the straight way, also the palla would go at the back. So what really was it? Was it a wrap cloth? Maybe yes, because this is so architectural, the palla. So maybe it was used for wrapping gifts books, silver, whatever, to give from the Zamindar families to the kings or to the British. And so uh, we really don't know. There are many, many theories about it. And that is how we find the architectural bit. As you sign that these are all bricks. And this is the central portion, the central uh, deity or the central space or the central door. And we found, what we found is that there were paisleys always. So it be in our exhibition, we researched and we kind of put a, put together this grand show where we show the one paisley to the 12 paisleys, different saris, how they developed, from where they developed and what are the different designs that came on and what is the iconography that came on. As you can see that you can see that the British going in a train or the, or the hookah smoking women and men or you would see the beautiful flowers that they're giving, you would see the Mughal hats, you would see the Zamindari system. I think what was there earlier, much earlier what we see in museums in the Tapi collection and other private collections etc. Uh, is that uh, there used to be a floral border, there used to be very barik booties, there used to be an architectural palla. So whether it had an elephant or it had the hookah smoking or it had a figure it like a train going or whatever, the iconography was all from a local area and what they saw is what they wove. 
but it's not just temples. The weaves of India are inspired from all forms of art and architecture. In Patan, for instance, the splendid Ranki Vav, a step well, is home to these motifs that slip from stone to silk in the famous Patan Patola. All these weaves created with painstaking effort and great skill are works of art on their own merit. But few realize that they are also pieces of living history that carry great legacies.